Oh, you're close. There was a you that was struggling to get up. That's cool. Shush! I didn't tell him we got brick. Maybe I did. Good morning, guys. It is Friday. Friday of a long weekend. We are three days until lambs. Or are we? They're little. Was one dead? Yeah, this was the last one that just came in. It's dead, so. But it, they look okay. Yeah. I just yeah. a little rose, but they're okay. Did one, it come out dead? Yeah, I thought okay. I just pulled it out dead. Look at its color. I know. And isn't it actually oh, like so that charlet? Look how bald it is. Well, I wonder if they're pretty. Yeah, I just wonder. Bad. And it's yeah. Oh, it looks just like Ruthie. She's a. Oh, she's not a new. She's not a new you. No. Look at her other two. Yeah, nice. She is good. Has she been good with them? Like looking them off? Yeah, she she just had, I don't know how she had a hard time pushing that. I know out, they're she did. tiny. <laughs> well, which one was first? This one. That one was already good. So maybe, when was that one, the last one? Yeah, I just pulled it oh, okay. out as soon as you were walking in. Okay, I wasn't sure maybe if, and then she has no more? No. Okay. Good girl, mom. Yeah. I guess I'm using this. Yeah, set up. All set up now. Oh yeah, because that's, yeah, that's it takes, one. it takes them a long time for 20 minutes. Can open up that back. You can get a little more room. Unless you want it small if you have to walk in the fire. I don't care. I think it'd give more room to lamb if they want to go back there. Or I'll open it up when I start sleeping down there. Yeah. Or did she just follow probably? No, she followed. Yeah. Well, I think this group, I don't think there's any new lambs. No. So we might have a nice group that just follows. I might strip out mom because she looks like she's got good milk and then save colostrum. So uh, Carissa said these lambs, the one was drinking off mom was she was actually giving birth. So she said she's pretty sure the ones drank, but I, the other one's been trying, but I haven't seen it on. So no matter what, we always kind of top them off just to make sure we know we got some. Um, and while I've got time, I'm going to just take Colostrum out of her instead of spending my money on the uh, powdered stuff. Uh, she's a nice quiet you, so hopefully she'll stand still for me. Did you find it? Oh, you're close. You're very close. I'm not I'm gonna go here with the easy. She's so quiet. She's she like, sleep. honestly, if I could just clone the sheep, <laughs> she's perfect. You're perfect. You are so lovely. Hi. You're looking so lovely. It's like they want me to notice them when they lay up. Yes. I love your ears. So Ritos do this too, eh? They, they can get really baldy-ish. Like you can tell around her face and her ears are very naked. And then some can be really hairy. Like really, like the one lamb is like completely hairy faced. Did you find a buddy? Sometimes the ears are paper thin. Well, the charlet is big time. Yeah. It just depends, because I do have charlet in some of the old, old genetics, right? So it just depends if those first 2016s with the, um, the, the bigger tags are just kind of a mixed. Their dads are all mixed. Oh, okay. So I don't know who necessarily 
there could be charlet in those ones. And then I repopped. I got them all out and started fresh. All right, now I got some milk for you. Which do you know which one's which? <laughs> which one was the first oh, one? This one's the first one. Was this one. At, yeah, yeah. So I've said this a million times, I'm going to say it again. One of the best times to observe your ewes, especially the ones that are going to be giving birth here soon, sorry, exposure is brutal, um, is to uh, see how they act when Carissa's is feeding. It's like the best time to observe that what the ewes are doing. There was a ewe that was struggling to get up and she was at the back and I'm like, oh, she's lambing. And I'm like, mm, no, she's not lambing. So Carissa saw her too, and she went to her, I went to her, and I'm like, let's check her for preg talks. So we, so I bought this uh, ketone blood kit uh, a, a few lambings ago, and it's been great. This you, uh, I just tested her, I took a little sample of blood from her ear, and uh, she's at 1.5. When the blood BHB meters uh, are over one, they're subclinical. They're in subclinical ketosis, uh, so the animals will often not be showing clinical signs. She's starting to. So the first sign is if they struggle to get up. So my goal is to like get them early. If I get them early, there's a really good chance of saving them. Two or over is clinical. So she's subclinical. Uh, so I still have time to. And basically, all I have to do is treat once a day with glycol. So that's orally, um, and monitor closely. So. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna keep her in that little pen and give her glycol once a day. Maybe I'll give her a couple days and then check check this again. But this has been worth its weight in gold. Saving some U's from this. I don't know why Pregtox is still an issue. It's really bothering me. I must actually knew this might be an issue because I went shopping the other day and bought syringes, oral syringes. These are, without a doubt, the best. And unfortunately, I know because I've had to use them. These ones got that cool. I don't know what this is for though. This little blue thing. I don't, I don't know what that's for. I love these. So I have to do this treatment for three days, once a day, and then I will check her blood ketones again and see where she's at. And she's still pretty perky. So let's go treat her. Just like sugar. When we went to dip those lambs this morning, we realized that on my list, I forgot one kind of important thing, and that was my shooter cups that I used to dip. And I know a lot of you don't like the fact that I use these shot glasses. Um, I am convinced it has changed our lives when it comes to uh, lambs not picking up joint ill. This last group, I think I had one. No, we were treating two. So uh, a couple things, I think it's, using these and dipping them when they're right when they're born uh, and everyone's gonna be like well they lick it off they actually it's it's such a strong alcohol on it you really just need to dip the very very tip of that uh, umbilical cord and uh and it and it works instantly it dries out like i get it on my hands sometimes if i don't wear gloves and it's instantly it dries out your skin instantly so that stuff's really strong so i'm convinced it's done a lot so for you know a buck 50 for 40 of these and i just we put in we put in enough that it will dip like um if the, if say there's five born at once we'll dip the five throw out the cup so um or at least throw out the iodine in the cup and clean the cup so this will last us for a few lambings. While I was there, <laughs> I can't even go past the drive through without turning. Like my vehicle's autopilot, I swear. So Mark is almost done planting our canola. I was going to try to take footage for you guys yesterday. Uh, he worked it. Actually, he put, it, he put on... Um, I'm going to get this wrong. He spread fertilizer yesterday morning. I'll have to remember to ask him what it was. And then he worked it in and now he's and then he started planting last night so he's just finishing up this morning it's beautiful out today for planting and we have a little bit of moisture in the ground which is nice now 
So it should have a nice uh, foundation for getting started through this fall. And then, of course, we'll harvest it next July. Early July is the plan. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to drop off some brekkie and uh, a smoothie for him. And he's coming now. How's your smoothie? It's probably it's good, <laughs> except for what I ate before the smoothie. Shush. I didn't tell him we got brekkie. Maybe I did. Almost done. What do you think? Another two hours? forgot a year or so ago I bought a refractometer to test colostrum and uh, I found it when I was putting my lambing kit together and I'm like oh I want to use that again this year um, so I just took out a little bit more colostrum out of mom now this is her like she lambed this morning so she's already uh, what is it 10 o'clock she's only a couple hours in so her colostrum sh still should be pretty good I don't really remember how to do this so I think this is like the microscope end, and I think you put the a drop of milk here. Oh, here we go. Huh. It's right here. You could probably have to clean it. And read the instructions, Sandy. Imagine that. Okay, I think I got it figured out. So you use the daylight. Basically, you put you put a couple drops of milk here, you shut the top, and then you look up towards... I mean, I got lots of light in this barn, so I basically just have to look up against the, up to the ceiling. And it should give me a reading. Now, I don't know if it's got readings on this. It doesn't. So I'll have to uh, Google what a good colostrum is. I think, I think I read over 30 is good. Over 20 maybe. It's been a while. I'm just going to have to relearn this. I don't know why I quit doing things. Because then I have to relearn it all. Silly. Alright, let's see if I can take a little drop. That's cool. I don't remember using this last time. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little drop. Okay. And then you're supposed to maybe put a little more. And you're supposed to shut this guy. Uh, let's see. I don't even know. Maybe it'll go... Taking the reading where the boundary line of blue and white cross a graduated scale. Oh, I see. I'm like, why can't I read this? My vision going, but I think you can actually. Like 24.9. What well, 24.9 is that? I think I've seen much better. I found uh, this online. How is colostrum quality measured? Uh, testing at specific gravity using a colostrum or brie bricks refractometer, which is this. Good quality colostrum has a specific gravity. So basically a bricks measurement, is it bricks or brie? I think it's bricks measurement of greater than or over 22. So she's 24.8. So she's okay, but just barely. So I am wondering if it's now, it could be because this was my second time actually taking quite a bit out of her so maybe I think as she starts producing her own milk that that quality of that colostrum measurement is obviously going to get watered down with milk but that's a cool another little tool I forget about all these tools you get busy lambing so I like just the uh the calm before the storm if I 
have a few minutes is to revisit all the tools that I have and to maybe start using some of them again when I'm lamb lambing and I can't answer certain questions. But anyway, I'm going to take this and just top off those lambs. This is their second feeding. Um, they both drank about 100 to 150 mils this morning uh, and only a couple hours ago. So we'll just we'll just do this and see if they drink. They looked interested a minute ago. Morning. We're checking our canola depth. And so far, oh, he found one. How's it look? Looks decent. Looks decent. It's really hard to find. I know. It's super small. Really, really small seed. And we're planting like, how many did you say? Three pounds in an acre? Yeah. So they're spread out quite a bit. So it's really fine. It's really hard to actually find the seed in a trench. This is the first time we've seeded our own, right? Yeah. Because we got a friend of ours to do the last, the last two times we grew canola was kind of an uh, experiment. And he used a different sort of device that kind of, it's, it kind of spreads it and then works it in, right? Yeah, then packs it. And packs it after. So this is the first time we've actually used our air drill, air seeder to drill it in. So we're learning. The other thing too is whether I I try to not run too much fan speed. Mm -hmm. So more. they wouldn't blow right out? Yeah, but you gotta run so much. They're, like there's definitely moisture there. Oh no, there's tons of moisture. It's just if it's sitting as a little crumbly stuff at the top. Yeah. All right, Mark decided to roll though that canola. He's just a little concerned uh, that the moistures aren't meeting where the seed is and that seed needs moisture. So he just ran out with the roller now. Uh, before that, we actually took our wheat seed uh, to get treated. So we always keep a little bit of our wheat back. We always buy certified wheat, which is like from a retailer, but then we also uh, grow certified wheat to keep back to treat ourselves and then to plant. So we will be planting wheat when the soybeans come off and uh, we do a, a, a good chunk of it will be like our own homegrown wheat and then from this year and then a big chunk of it will be certified seed that we buy. So that will be planted, yeah that'll be planted after the soybeans here. Uh, so we're just trying to get that world figured out before we, I get busy lambing here. Um, which, no lambs today, but my uh, little babies are doing good. How are you doing today? You look pretty good. I stripped her out yesterday morning, like I milked her. So I had, I don't know, a quarter of a bottle. Tried to feed them both um, after I tested it with the refractometer. And only the one with the brown ears would drink a little bit. The other one was very much satisfied, wouldn't drink. I fed her um, that little bit of a bottle. So that was her second feeding from me. And then I tried again last night and neither one of them would drink. So they're all on mum. And I actually tried to milk her out again last night and she wouldn't milk. So I'm like, perfect. Then I know they're all getting fed and they're happy. I just like doing that before I go in for the night because it's a long night if they didn't have enough colostrum. Someone's jealous. Hi, baby. Oh, oh. We gotta dodge him. How are we? Can I have a wag? <laughs> That's the best. Come on. We can do it. Good girl. I can tell she's been laying down. Laying down in your feed. Time for some sugar. Ready? I know you guys like it. Okay. Good girl. Hi, Mama. 
You are so sweet. You're so sweet. Good morning, everyone. I uh, made a little bit of a discovery yesterday afternoon when I was coming into my office to do a new feed sheet. Five months ago, I uh, changed the date of breeding. And this is when it was supposed to start lambing, which is tomorrow. And uh, that's the actual day, Wednesday. So five months ago, I think we were away. And so I had to shift breeding two days. So what was supposed to be our first day of lambing, which is tomorrow, is actually pushed off till Wednesday. So the 7th is the actual due date of these ladies. And I made a, an honest effort on my computer and my calendar to make sure I was organized. But for whatever reason, I didn't cross out this one until yesterday. So, um, yeah, so I think subconsciously I left it so I would be ready for lambing on the 5th and then when it happened on the 7th, I'd be really ready. It sucks for you guys though because you still are only left with our sweet baby set of twins. Um, so I do need to treat that, that mama, the you with the preg tox. I have to treat her one more time today with glycol and then I want to take her blood test again and see if we're winning. If we're not winning, I may uh, change the treatment. Well, we'll see where we're at. She's she's laying down a lot, but she can get up. So we'll see. I'll have to ask Chris if she's gotten up for her this morning uh, when she fed, but she's laying down right now again, so. Hi guys. Where's my other baby? Why can't you let me see her, okay? Here. All right, you. Carissa got you up, didn't she? You want a sippy? I oh, know, you don't like this. I know. Gotta get you stronger. Hi, baby. Good girl. Alright, I got my blood test kit and a strip and a needle to draw a little blood. Oh, hi. You getting up? Oh. Okay, let me just find a little. Here we go. Oh boy. So we went the wrong way. That's bad. So now she is definitely clinical and we have to start calcium. Well, this is why we check. Hey, have you been eating? You're pooping, that's good. She's got, she's pooping really good, and she is drinking water, so we're okay, but we're definitely going to start calcium. Oh, it's okay. Oh, her pee is pretty golden yellow, though. That should be pretty clear. I know it's kind of gross, but a sure sign of real, like, ketosis or pregnancy toxemia for what I've had before on down use is pee that smells just, it takes your breath away. She doesn't smell at all. Like I'd be able to smell it from here. Okay, I've got my arsenal of stuff. Calcium, needle for calcium. Little needle for sub Q. Let's do your favorite thing first, which is glycol, which you hate. I know you fight it, but it's keeping you alive. You can thank me later. Mark hates it when I do this vitamin stuff. It's got um, thiamine in it. Thiamine has a real smell. It reminds me of a vet clinic, honestly, but Mark does not like the smell. Oh, now, calcium. 50 mils. So I do uh, about five spots on her back, sub Q, and I do 10 mils in each spot. One, two, Four, five. Okay, there's 50 mil. All right, her udder actually feels uh, like she's closer than I thought. I don't like inducing them when I think they're too, too far off from having a lamb. I like to wait. I like to give the lambs as much of a chance at maturing as I possibly can. But she does look like she's hollowed out a little bit. 
So I'm gonna go with my gut, and I think I might just uh, induce her and hope those lambs are alive. Because she's such a young ewe, I don't wanna lose her. And she's getting up still, I think we have a chance to save her. Instead of waiting till you go down, and once they go down, it's often too late. All right, I'm uh, inducing her with dexamethasone. And uh, usually when I do this, usually, it doesn't always happen, uh, but usually within about 50 hours, 5-0, uh, then usually that's when they will start to lamb. Good girl. You see, you lambs are going crazy. Okay, I'm gonna feed her a little bit of creep right now. Let's see if she'll eat it. Hello. 